uh, morning everybody. Time to crack on with another video. Um, as you know, I've been busy sewing up here uh, in the loft the last, uh, last couple of days. The light box is working fantastic. I tweeted on my Facebook page the other, the other night because um, I had started off some of the bin. As I say, there's loads of comments on the internet at the moment. Um, just looking outside, it's snowing like hell right now. It's absolutely freezing. And here, it's just a nice steady temperature. I haven't got any more than 50, 55. And it's the same with me greenhouse downstairs. I never have it any warmer than that. Um, as I say, there's a lot of people want to get started soon. Um, want to get their plants in, get their seeds in. Just hold on. There's nothing wrong with sowing inside, by all means. But it's having the, the gear outside uh, to be able to cope with the young plants that you're taking out of your house and it are a cold greenhouse you'll end up losing them so just there uh, so just bide your time um, I know everybody wants to get started earlier earlier and earlier there's uh, loads of comments on some of the um, some of the leeks and onions uh, some of the big guys are growing of course they're the growers they're the shores uh, and they grow for the shores they've got all the gear in their greenhouses they've got the heat they've got an extra light and that's how they're getting so big um, so uh, don't be dismayed about them as I say they're the big growers they're the shores they are well ahead, even by my standards. Um, but what we'll do today, we'll pop downstairs in the greenhouse and I'll show you how my lakes and onions are getting on. Nice and steady. Nothing too fantastic, but they're just growing nice and cool the way I like them. Uh, maybe it's next year when I get my bigger greenhouse set up. I'll put an extra light downstairs and I'll grow them on a little bit quicker next year. But for the time being, I'm quite happy. If you just sow onions and leeks for your garden, this is the way to do it, just nice and steady. Um, as I say, I, I, I got the light box. In my last video, I made the light box up. Um, because of having my accident, I can't get up the allotment as much as I'd like to. So what I'm doing, I'm sewing upstairs here, bring them on, and then putting them downstairs into the lower greenhouse. And once they get a decent enough size, transporting them from there up to um, up the allotment with help of the brothers. Uh, it's like a shuttle service at the moment. Plants are getting moved from A to B. The difference of mine, they've all got that little bit of heat, they're all frost free. If you're bringing stuff up in the house, fine, yeah, for starting them off. But once you get them outside, that's where the difference is going to, that's, a, that's where it's going to tell. They're absolutely freezing outside and they'll not survive. So if you're bringing tomatoes up in the house, you need that bit of heat in the greenhouse outside to keep them ticking over. If you haven't got that heat, you're going to lose them. So you might as well hold on. I never saw my tomatoes turn March. But what I've did this morning, um, if I can find it, and you know my, the way I sew, it's always with multi-purpose compost and uh, a good handful of sharp sand. Um, so what I've did this morning, I've, uh, I've sewed a small pot with half a dozen seed in, tomato seed, and I'm going to let them grow, I'm going to put them off and I'm going to take them up to a cold greenhouse. And I'm just going to show you the effects that will have on them. But this is up north, down south you might have a couple of degrees difference. It all depends on where you are in the country. Um, a lot of people keep saying, we we'll read the seed packet and it says so in January. It, it doesn't so in January. It says so in between these months. It's just a guide. That's all it is. It's just a guide. So in between them months. So if you've got the gear at home, by all means so. But if you haven't got the gear, wait on. Uh, there's nothing wrong with sowing in March. Believe you me, it's a fantastic month. You've got your light levels to come back. You're getting a little bit of heat in your temperature. Um, years ago, when I started gardening uh, uh, with my dad, in the allotment. All we used to use is uh, a seed box, nice nice compost and a sheet of glass over it. Sheet of newspaper and a sheet of glass and that's how he brought his tomatoes up. No extra heat whatsoever and uh, often hawk back to the old days. Um, we used to get some cracking crops but we never used any artificial means to bring them up. Nowadays it's all changing. A lot of people want to get started on their plots very early but uh, just take a bit, little bit of advice here. Um, just hold on for a, for a couple of weeks yet. Uh, I'll just show you these. As I say, the light box is turned towards here now. What that's doing, what light's coming in through the roof is getting reflected back onto the plants. And there we are. That's, now they're just they're just over a week, nearly into a fortnight. And they're well through. That's took my first lot of geraniums. So I'm well chuffed with them. Um, the petunias are just popping through there. Uh, the petunias and the begonias were all sown, and the busy lizzies were all sown on the top of the compost. 
and all they've got is a little bit of vermic light on the top, a little bit of pearl light, and that just helps them anchor themselves um, to the compost. They don't like being shut out from the light uh, or hindered from the light. They like to just throw on the top of the compost and it'll grow away quite easy. Uh, the, the geraniums they just had a little bit of fine sieve compost over the top of the seed and they're well through. So I'm well chucked with them. I'll get them downstairs. I'll let them go for at least another week into here and then I'll pop them downstairs in the greenhouse where, as I say, the temperature is around about the 50 mark. Um, so I'm going to crack on today with a few more seeds um, and I'll let them get in early. In the Koshiana, that's a beautiful plant, well scented. So I'd like to get them in early. I sow them exactly the same as what I do with the Lobelia in rows. Check on my last video and uh, that's the way to sow them. And of course one of my favourite plants, so I managed to get the shields yesterday. Of course the wife took us down the taxi to get me hair cut. And uh, I managed to get it in my Wilco uh, store. And there's my favourite seed. Swan River Daisies. 25p a packet. Can I beat that? And uh, just... Um, Judging by a packet, as I say, your packet's great. It's got stacks of information on. Um, it gives you your seed count, it gives you your, your months, your temperatures, um, and there's 150 seeds in there. So I managed to get six packets uh, because I use absolutely thousands of these. I give loads away, I sell quite a few of them in the baskets when people want baskets making up. But they, they are definitely be going in soon. But um, as I say, March is a fantastic month. And that's when most of these will be getting started off with. I bought some more geraniums, pound a packet, crap and stuff, and there's 12 seed in there, so it's not too bad. So I managed to get another five packets of them, which gives another 60 seed. Uh, I've already got 50 seeds started off, so it's going to give me about 100 plants, which I'll quite easily use up. Um, a lot of fair, uh, a lot of other comments on different um, different methods of sowing. Sweet peas, uh, well as you know I saw my new autumn, I've got lovely autumn grown ones coming up at home, at the greenhouse, and they've been really through the mill. Minus temperatures up the allotment, and they're still growing away, they're only small but they're lovely and sturdy. Once it starts warming up towards the end of this month into March, you'll see them start picking up. I'm not bothered about the tops, as I keep saying, it's not about the top, it's what's underneath in the pots, nice big fat root ball, growing really well. They'll get pinched out in about a fortnight's time, end of February, beginning of March. We'll just nip the tops out, put a cane in, and you'll start. You'll see them rot away in the March time. They'll really get a nice big, massive plant for planting out in April, late April, early May up north. Maybe a little bit sooner down south for you, but there, uh, that's when we plant ours, and you get a fantastic crop of, uh, of flowers in the summer. Here's another one of my favourites if you want to try them, uh, Cineraria. And these are what I call a spot plant. Um, they're great for growing. You'll see them in the parks and shows. Um, the, the spot plants in between your lobelias and your, your reds are a nice great foliage plant. Now I grow a lot of them um, for the baskets and pots. So that's another good uh, plant to get up. That'll go in, that'll go in today because they, they need a bit of a, a longer temperature to, uh, a bit longer to grow on. So as with my geraniums, I'll plant them. They'll go in rows exactly the same as the Lepedia, so I can prick them out a little bit easier and put them into single pots as they get on. So that's another plant. Um, marigolds, sweet peas, of course I'll do another sort of sweet pea, a spring sort of sweet pea, but they'll, they'll not go until March because they'll grow away quite easy. Your marigolds, well, you just throw them in the tree and they'll grow. I've got a big box of marigold seed that I save myself every year. But I always end up with a few packets from friends and family that pick them up, they get three packets of seeds, and of course they all end up down here. But they don't go to waste because what I do, I put them in single trays, mark them, and they'll go back to them. Uh, but the likes of that stuff, sweet pea, marigolds, wait until March, it sticks a time. Just don't be in so much of a hurry to get, uh, get stuff in. Um, there's, a, see, there's a lot of stuff over here, I've got a See it more marigolds, more sweet peas. Um, I've got some snapdragon somewhere, antarinum. Now they'll go in uh, today because they're a small plant, and once again, the antarinums will be sown on the top of the compost. They don't like being prohibited from light. Just put them on the top and just a sprinkling of um, pure light, um, and they'll be fine. As I say, now these plastic trays, 
These will go back down to the back down to the greenhouse at home. I'll take the trees that plants downstairs and they'll go and sit on the top of them. And so round about fifty mark in the greenhouse, it's gonna raise it a couple of degrees with them lids on the top. And I've got my light out downstairs so that's given that at the, it's getting twelve hours of daylight every day now and they, they'll just grow away, take over nice and slow. Um, I don't like rushing plants, I just like to let them come away nice and slowly in their own time and I'm quite happy with that. So that's it for the time being. I, as I say I've got lots of sewing to do but I'm going to crack on with them this afternoon. What I'm going to do now is uh, pop down to the greenhouse and see how things are getting on the greenhouse. I know it's uh, it, there's a thick blanket of snow outside there so I'm going to just take my time. But uh, as I say, if you want to take some advice, some good advice, just hold on for a couple of weeks because uh, the weather's going to turn bad again and we're focused to have a really freezing period over the next 10 days. So if you want to sow any plants, I mean the likes of leeks, onions, by all means, get them sown. They'll come away quite easy and just a uh, first read greenhouse. But the likes of your tender plants, your tomatoes, your chilies, your peppers, if you're sowing them in the house, just be canny because... Uh, once you start growing, they'll get a bigger plant, you're going to need a lot more room. As the plants get, especially tomatoes, once tomatoes get a hold and they start rotting away, you'll end up with this a four foot plant and you've got no way to put it. Um, and if you're going to heat a greenhouse for the sake of a hot dozen tomato, tomato as well, it's, um, that's fine. It's, but it's all money, um, it's all money that you can well do with saving yourself. Just hold on, get them sown in the middle of March. Um, Begin the middle of March or so mine. By April, when you're putting them up, you're coming on towards the end of April, you can safely then sow in a, or plant them into a cool greenhouse or a frost free greenhouse and they should grow away okay. But if, you, if you're starting your plants off now and you're going to have a big plant in a couple of weeks' time and put it in a cool greenhouse, you'll lose it. So, my advice just just go kite. Um, spring's around the corner, it's not far away. So uh, just uh, just take your time. As I say, I'm going to get there. Uh, I'm going to get some more flower seeds soon in the day. I'll get them, get cracking on with them. But I want to pop down the greens and I'll show you how I'm getting on with my leeks and onions. Okay, so I'll see you soon. Right, well, afternoon, everybody. I've managed to. Get on here and try and get a, a little bit of work done. As you can see the, the sun's just coming over the roof here. Um, I normally catch about two or three hours of an afternoon, um, just as the uh, sun's highest point in February. It's um, it's not quite where I like it to send the around about the March time I start getting a, a good full day in of, uh, of sunshine. We're well pleased with that. Anyway, I just want to, as I say, I want to get on and check these leaks out, and uh, just it was really freezing through the night. Um, temperatures are down to minus two or three in the northeast here. Yeah. So I've came came down it says afternoon and the temperatures have, have shut back up again. I'm, I'm looking at round about forty fifty two in here now and that's where the sun run. So it must have been pretty cold through the night. I think it's dropped down to about forty in here. But uh, as I say I'm quite happy with that. Um I've had a load of uh, new subscribers on there on the YouTube channel. Well, as I say, welcome everybody. Um, London Worms and Garden, uh, George's Bits, Fifty Shades of Green, Mags H, uh, Blake Skill 85, All Things Retired People, that's a good one. I wish I had been a bit more, um, uh, what do you call it, with my, uh, my webpage. Rhubarb and Red Currants, Ian Hall, Elaine Donnelly, in JL Allotment Diary. Well, welcome everybody. As I say, I'm uh, I'm glad you've uh, you've subscribed. I must be doing something right. If you if you're getting a few steps over, oh, well, great stuff. Um, as I say, it's geraniums. I've just brought them downstairs. I was going to leave them upstairs for now week, but I'm uh, I'm quite happy to bring them down in, in the greenhouse here. And that's a larger tree, and they're well through. And all they'll do now is just sit there. As it says, plastic cover. Pop that over. With the temperatures in here, around about the 50 mark, I'm quite happy at that. They're growing away nice and steady. Well pleased with them. Um, the onions I'm going to start on today. Well, there we are. Um, that's what Peter's been going out for weeks on end. Uh, now, that's what I call a crook stage. 
uh, the onions. They've opened up their single single leaf, and the, the top leaf is just it's just starting to fold over, and that's what I call the crook stage. Now, there's a lot of the big growers always pot theirs off at that stage. Now, that's why I saw mine in single cells, so I get away with doing well with doing well with that stage, this, the crook stage. But I will pot them up, and they'll go to a multi tray, as I say, there's a tray there of uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and they'll go into that tray. And the only benefits I can see is that they're going to a bit fresh compost, a bigger pot for the roots to grow, and they'll grow away um, a lot quicker. So that's the, um, the recommended anyway. But I'll try them, that's why I decided to put a couple of uh, seeds in a pot. And uh, as I say, I've always sold mine single cells, and that's my single cell ones at the back here. And they're growing away quite well. I'm well pleased with them. I'll pop them down here for a minute. Uh, that was the Billy Lamb onions, the big onions. Uh, these are the Yilta Craig, and you can see them a lot better. They just come out the crook stage here. Yeah? These are the ones I'm going to pot up in the single trays and just see what the difference is between my, my onions and these onions. Uh, and there'll not be a great deal of difference, but uh, I'm always willing to try. The pot leaks are all through. Uh, that's my big pot leaks. Now they'll stop in them pots now till May. Uh, people will be thinking, God, that's a big pot just for a few weeks. It's not because uh, what I like to do is, with that, all my plants, um, I like to make sure I get a good root system on the lot before I start plotting anything out. So I sprinkled a couple of dozen uh, mussel brow leeks in the pot there. And as I say, they'll stop in there on May now. But you'll get a nice pencil thick leak. It'll be about a good foot tall and they'll have a fantastic root system on. But I'll, I'll cut the roots um, before we plant out, but I'll show you all that in another video. At the moment, they're just ticking away. Um, probably this weekend they'll come out of here and they'll go up the allotment. Whereas I've got a frost free greenhouse up the allotment and they'll just sit that time out there until May. Uh, if they don't need any extra feed, <coughs> we can feed in the trays and the, the pots can take the, take the water off quite easy. So, well pleased with them. Uh, and sure leaks well. Yeah, just taking away, potting them up into two litre pots. Uh, and these are the uh, Paul Rochester leaks, the, the Yorkshire Giants. I'm keep, keeping them flags down as Paul suggested. Just got a nice small leak. They're not as big as uh, some of the other lads, but uh, as I say, I've got no ex no extra amount of heat down here. I don't like giving the plants too much heat. I like to just keep it nice and steady, even through the winter months, as long as it's frost free and the uh, temperatures around about 45, 50 mark up over, even upstairs in my loft, in my, um, my loft it's only 50, 55. I don't use any extra heat. I don't like um, forcing the plants at all. I just like them just to grow away nice and slowly. <coughs> as I've said in my last videos, the, the main thing this time of year is the light. As long as the plants are getting full light and they're not stretching, you're not stressing them, and they'll grow away just nice and steady at their own pace. So uh, they'll go down there. I'm quite happy just to let them sit in them two liter pots right until March, middle of March, and then I'll, I'll think about putting them up into a, into a bigger pot. But for the time being, they're fine. Um, I'll get them onions done, I'll put them up. Um, now, the shallots. When I, when I sowed the shallots, a bit of disappointment this morning when I got up. Um, that's my shallot seed, uh, if you remember, um, and I was going to send away for some. Uh, so what I did when the, when my potatoes arrived and my shallots arrived, I put them in a cool garage, just in the shelf, frost free, in a nice clean tray. Now this morning I was being able to pot them up in the single single cell pots, just like that, just in the tray. And I had two dozen Jerome because I fancied trying them this year. They're a French banana um, shallot. And to my disappointment, lovely big shallots. But when I started peeling the, the skins back, if you can see, there's a lot of bite risk underneath. You know, you cannot see from the. Is it, there's one good one. You, you cannot see anything on there. But uh, I'm a bit picky me, and I like to take the loose skins off. And of course, if I hadn't have taken the loose skins off, I would have never known. But uh, I've had a, all I've got left now is uh, seven, so I've lost two thirds of my stock uh, just to that. I've been in touch with the, um, the seed supplier this morning. I'll not mention the name because they're a fantastic uh, seed supplier. I've used them for years, 
It's just one of them things that happens to uh, a very nice lady on the phone who I explained to her and she says, no, no problem Mr Foreman, we'll get it sorted. We have had a, a few reports about this, but they're the, Jum they're the Jumo shallots. So if you've got them and you've got them in storage, I'd suggest you get them out and just have a look. It's not so much the outer skin, it's the inner. And that's what they put me off because, as I say, I'm a bit pickety and I like to just peel away any loose skins. And if I hadn't done that, I would have never known. So, the Jumo shallots for this year have been discounted from this company. Uh, they're not sending any more out, so they're going to send us out uh, another packet, uh, similar ones. Bit disappointed, but uh, hey ho, that's the way it goes. I've got about six or seven of them, but I'll be planting them up today. But what I will be doing, I'll be giving them a dozen of yellow sulphur, just to be on the safe side, and just in case there is any spores or moulds on them. Um, but just be very careful. As I say, the uh, Jumo shallots. The banana shape. If you've got them in storage uh, and you haven't planted them yet, get them out and just check them, just to be on a safe side. Right, so that's that out of the way. As I say, I'm downstairs. I've got few leaks not to do. Here, yeah, the sun shining. What more can you ask for? Quite happy with that. The seeds are doing well. Uh, everything else seems to be taking over quite nicely. So for the time being, I'm just going to turn on these few onions and. Uh, get them potted up and then maybe the allotment the weekend if all going well I'll get the brother to take us up in the car I can't do much but what I want to do is I want to start potting these leeks up that I've got up the allotment I've got a lot of blanch leeks up there um, I'm not going to show them this year because see, I'm, as I say I'm way behind with my times I should have been well ahead um, by now but um, next year different story what I'm going to concentrate on is uh, get up and get the daily tuber sorted um, I need to get them sorted out and get them on some sort of a, a dry heat bench. Um, there's a lot of condensation up the um, up the tunnels uh, that's been leaking onto the pots, and then of course it's, it's wetting the moisture, and that's what you don't want with dahlias. When your dahlias in storage, you just want to keep them nice and cool and more or less dry the compost, so it keeps the, the tubers nice and uh, nice and dry. But I'm going to pull them out this weekend. I'll take the camera up there. Um, another thing is the um, the croissants. Um, no way I'm going to be showing any this year. I'm just too far behind with them. They should have been down here on a little bit of heat with a bit extra light. And they hopefully I should have been taking some cuttings at the back end of last month, back end of January, when I like to put them on the heat and start taking a few cuttings. Uh, but that hasn't happened this year. But no matter, what we'll do, we'll take a few cuttings in March. So we'll, we'll still keep the stock. But we'll, there'll be a later flower, much later flower. But um, we'll let them grow on. And uh, I'll just show you how we're going with my cuttings. But that's a rare, uh, that's a job for um, for the weekend. At the moment, I'm just there. Uh, I'm just enjoying myself watching the uh, watching the birds. I've got a pair of magpies nest up in the trees just out the back there, and absolutely beautiful. Blue tits are coming down, feeding away. I've got a couple of finches over there somewhere. I keep hearing them through the day. So yeah, it's a beautiful place here. I'm well pleased. Bulbs are all popping through that I put in back end last year. I put a lot more um, daffodils, some. Uh, some more tulips and uh, some, of course, the wife's favourite, the irises, they're all planted out, but they're popping through. I know it's freezing up here in the northeast, but just this bit of sunshine's a bit deceiving, uh, but it's nice in the greenhouse here. As I say, it's just a nice steady temperature, not too hot. So I'm uh, I'm going to plot on these onions, I'm going to get these potted up, uh, and just uh, keep an eye on them over the next couple of weeks and just see what uh, see what difference I make. Uh, the only other thing I brought down was the, um, I brought up Tree petunias down. I planted them only a week ago, and uh, as I say, the light box it makes a total difference uh, to upstairs. Um, even though there's not a lot of heat on, it's, uh, the light it gives, and that's that's the main thing. They were just sown on the top, the first tree I sowed, and they're through there now. So I brought them downstairs here, a little bit cooler, but with a bit more cover, and uh, they'll grow away just nice and slowly now, and then uh, hopefully by. The end of this month into March I'll be ready to start pricking off but once again that's another video um, how I like to get on with my plants but yeah for the time being once again welcome to all our new members that's uh, subscribed we we'll hope you're we're doing a little bit of um, giving you good some information and uh, doing you a bit of good if you want to follow our channel by all means we're going to be going all year uh, right through the season and hope you get some canny crops and uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's, um, it's enjoying yourself in the lot, in, on the plot, enjoying yourself in the garden, 
and just getting some great crops and fresh veg. And of course, don't forget the flowers for the missus. So, for the time being, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get stuck on these onions. And what I'll do is I'll get up the lot in the weekend, and we'll get started on these dahlias and these croissants, and we'll see if we can get some sorted up here. Okay, for the time being, bye for now.